Okay, so daily information from four grinding seasons between 2015 to 2019 for one a Louisiana factory were analyzed to identify operational problems in different production areas, as well as improvements and outstanding performance in a specific unit processes. So I was saying, uh, so daily information from one sugar factory were analyzed to identify operational problems in different areas and to identify improvements or outstanding performance in a specific unit processes. So we analyze different variables such as pole purity bricks, uh, flow rates, among others. And uh, we use a statistical analysis. So we use Pearson correlation coefficients, p-values, and the normal statistical analysis that include means, the standard deviation, maximum and minimum values. And we also estimate uh, sucrose losses across the factory in some uh, specific areas. And we use the two formulas that you can see here, one based on the increase of glucose and the other based on the reduction of, of sucrose. So uh, the common factory methodology uh, that this factory in a specific use is just to graph some of the information that daily okay. daily ob obtain. So the factory laboratories daily analyze hundreds of samples. They analyze juices, syrups, molasses, masquid, among others. But most of this information is not adequately uh, adequately analyzed. So they just obtain hundreds of samples of data like this in tables, but uh, they don't analyze that properly. So the maximum that they can do is graphs like this. Um, not only because they maybe don't have the, the resources because they don't have time to do it. So we, uh, yeah, that's it. So here uh, we are using two methodologies to analyze the information. So the first one that we were using is the box plot. It's a method for graphically uh, show groups of numerical data through their quartiles. So box plot, box plot may also have lines extending from the boxes. So this is the box and those are the box, the, the whiskers that shows the maximum and minimum values. So this uh, point here shows the maximum value of this variable. This, uh, the point at the, at the bottom is the minimum value. It also shows the top of the box is the 75 percentile. The median of the box is the it represent the median value of the variable, and the uh, top of the of the box shows the 75 percent of the of the of the variable. So on the uh, right side, you can see an example of the one of one variable. So we, we analyze that variable in two different years, year one and year two. And you can see that the, uh, the variable in the year one, the box is a little uh, bigger than the box on the year two, which represent that the variability of this uh, parameter during the first year was higher than the variability of the same uh, variable on the second year. So this is just a graphical method to help to easily compare the behavior of variables during the time or do, during different uh, grinding season. Next one, please. So the second methodology that we use is the histogram. It's a frequency distribution that shows how often each different value in a set of data occurs. So for example, this is the juice, juice pH frequency dia diagram. So uh, let's say your target of, for the juice pH is 76.9. So that means that 28% of the data do, uh, of the juice data had that pH at that time. So with this, you also can see the variability of this kind of, of parameters. Next one, please. We analyze different uh, opera, opera, uh, process units in the factory. The first uh, operation unit that we analyzed was the storage of cane. So we know that most of the factory, all of the factories here in Louisiana, storage cane during the night, and then in the next morning they grind that cane a, again. So in this specific factory, the delivery of fresh cane to the factory begins after 3 a.m. However, the factory estimate that they start grinding a fresh cane only after 11 a.m. 
And with that, with this analysis, we confirm by a statistical analysis that uh, the, the cane suffer a deterioration uh, during this time, and the juice purity is higher after the 11 a.m. when they start uh, grinding a fresh cane. You can see in the in the boxes for each year that between 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. the purity of the juice is higher than the purity at 7 a.m. and 3 a.m which are the first and the last one box in, in each uh, set of, of boxes. So juice purities were statistically lower at 7 a.m. and 3 a.m. when the store cane was still being crushed. And juice purity at 7 a.m. could be higher if the factory could use FIFO methodology. So what is FIFO methodology? FIFO methodology is first in, first out. So we know that the factories uh, uh, storage cane during the nine and they put like, I mean, like the cane of 7 a.m., 7 p.m., they put it in a place, but they are going to start grinding that, that uh, sugar cane the next morning. And the last cane that they put it, they put it in the ground, let's say 6 a.m., is going to be the first one that they are going to grind the next day. And it, it, it should not be like that. It should be in the opposite way. If the first cane that they put, they put in the ground should be the last one that they have to, to take. Next one, please. The next uh, unit process that we analyze is the milling process. So a pole extraction greater than 96% is expected in the, in the milling process to obtain a polling bagas under two points. However, the pole extraction obtained since 2016 was below 96%. You can see that in the graph on the left. Therefore, the poll in Vagas was about two points, and you can see the poll in Vagas on the graph on the, on the right side. There was a reduction in the poll in the in Vagas values between 2015 to 2019, but uh, from 2.6 to 2.1, which could also be affected by the reduction in poll of cane in recent, in recent years. The next station is the use clarification. So this factory has three clarifiers op operating in, in parallel. We compare the performance of each uh, clarifier and there was no statistical difference in the performance of each one um, for each year. Another thing that we analyze here is that it uh, was notable the effect of the juice pH on the turbidity of the, of the clear juice. You can see on the right side on the, on the slide, in 2016, the pH, the target pH for the juice was uh, around 7 to 7.2, and only 30, between 35 to 45% of the juice had that pH at that year. And on the left side of the, of the slide, you can see the clear juice turbidity. And specifically during these years, 2016, you can see that the turbidity, the boxes of the clear juice is bigger than the other boxes of the other years, which means the pH is, it was affecting the clear juice uh, turbidity. If you go to the, to the graph on the uh, right side, on the bottom side of the presentation, you can see the histogram of the pH, but in 2019. And you can see that the control of pH improved because now uh, between 70, 70 to 82% of the, of the juice had the, the, had the correct pH between 7 to 7.2. So why this uh, control pH improve? Because the factory started a strict electrode cleaning routine and they also install a pH meter with higher resistance to follow falling uh, juice conditions. With this improvement in the, in the control of the juice pH, they improve also the turbidity of the clear juice. So if you go, if you see the, the box plot, you can see that during 2019, the box plot are smaller than the other years. So an improve in the control pH improve the, the clear juice turbidity also. Next one. The next station is mud filtration. So um, the, this factory has five, has five filters working in parallel, in parallel, and the stability of the filter cake has, has improved over the years. 
you can see that the box, you can see on the left side of the slide that during the 2015 and 2016, the variability and the size of the box was, was higher and the whiskers. But at the end, during 2019, the box was a little uh, uh, small and the whisker also were, were shorter. So that means that the stability of that variable filter K pole improved during the years. Um, if we are going to analyze the capacity of this station, uh, we analyze the, the meter square per ton of K per hour. As a, a general standard, we can say that a, a factor is going to have a low pole, filter K pole if this value is between 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. So that means that the factory has enough capacity to process the mod. In this factory in particular, the capacity is around 0 0.4, which is below the recommended standard. So this factory knows that they have to work in this area and they are planning to install a new field mod filter to increase the capacity. And due to this uh, uh, short capacity, they have to increase the speed of the bigger filter that they have, the filter one and the filter four. And you can see that the result of this is an increase on the pole of the filter, filter cake. So in the graph in the middle, you can see the filter cake pole per filter. And you can see that the filter one and the filter four has the uh, higher, higher pole. The next station is evaporation. So this factory has three uh, sets of evaporators working in parallel, and we compare the, the performance of each uh, set of evaporators. And we didn't find uh, differences between, between the three sets. The bricks in each one is, is almost the same. Um, however, it was a difference between the operation hours in this factory. So in the table, you can see the, evaporate, the final evaporator zero bricks uh, at different times. So you can see the bricks between 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. and the bricks between 7 p.m. to 3, 3 a.m. And in each series, in each set, you can see that during the day, between 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., the, the bricks is lower than the bricks during the night. So we, we, asked, we asked to the factory why this could happen. And they told us that during the day, they have to clean evaporators. So the, the area is lower during the day. And that obviously is affecting the, the zero uh, bricks. In this area, we also analyze the variability or the stability of the zero bricks, um, the zero bricks at the at the end of the evaporation process. The target for this factory for the zero bricks is between 63 to 64, and during 2018. 23% of the syrup that they were producing had, a, had, had the correct uh, bricks. And then in 2019, that, uh, that uh, stability of this process increased, improved, because now 53% of the syrup had a, had a correct bricks, bricks. So the factory uh, makes some improvements in the evaporation station. One of them was the, they started using a heat transfer coefficient to as a measure of the efficiency of the operation station. This is one of the tools that Dr. Birkett helped them to install in the factory. And uh, among others improvements, um, they increase the efficiency of, the, of this station. That's why we are seeing a better control in this station between 2018 to 2019. Um, in the final uh, unit in the boiling, boiling house, uh, we analyze some of the some of the variables that you are seeing in the table. So the seam, the mass quit purity and the crystal content in CPAN during 2019 were between were 53 percent and 28 percent respectively. According to those values, the purity drop in CPAN should be 20 percentage points. But as you, are, you can see in the table uh, in the red square, you can see that the C pan purity drop that the factory obtained was between 12% with maximum values of 16%. So they have like a, a they have a 
uh, as a, a, a low a low efficiency here. Sorry. So this indicates a low exhaustion in the CPAN, which could be a result for a small amount of seed, a small seed crystal, short boiling or crystallization time, among other factors that could affect the, the efficiency in the, in, the C, in the CPAN. So we are going to work with this factory to try to figure out which of those factors are affecting the, the CPAN efficiency. So the results that I already showed you are just some of the results that we obtained for this analysis. But here I'm going to show you all the conclusions that we, we got. So the crucial use purities were statistically lower at 7 a.m. to um, 3 a.m. when the cane store was still, uh, was still be grounded. And the factory should use FIFO methodology. So remember, first in, first out. The pole extraction in tandem mill was below 96%. So the factory should work in this area to improve the cane preparation in order to reduce the polling bagas below two points. The inhibition was between 200 and 250% with a notable e decrease in the deviation since 2015. However, it's recommendable to keep the inhibition as low as, as lower as possible if the factory wants to increase the milling rate without increasing the capacity or in case that the factory has problem with the, with the steam availability. Since 2015, the maximum, uh, the maximum purity drop in the tandem mill was 1.4% which was a result of the cleaning practices in the tandem mill in this factory because they, they uh, use shot treatments with bleach and they also use hot water to clean the, the mills. The use clarifications in the tree clarifiers can be rated as satisfactory with turbidity in clear use around 10 units and we didn't found any differences between the tree clarifiers that they are using. After 20, uh, 2018, the factory improved the, the control of the juice, of the pH of the juice. So the clear juice pH uh, data between the target range increased up to 87% and 82%. The filter capacity was around 0 0.4 meters square per ton, ton of cane per hour less than indicated by references. So that uh, low capacity uh, increased the speed of the filters one and four, which increased the pull in the filter cake. From 2019, um, there was no statistical difference in the zero bricks produced produce in the three evaporator sets. However, we found a difference in between the, the zero bricks during the day and during the night. The purity drop in CPAN reach was 12% below the reference of 20%, which as I say, they have to uh, find which factor, are affect which factor is affecting this uh, low exhaustion. It was found that uh, sugar reducers, ash, C-masquid viscosity, and C-magma purity affected the final molasses purity. However, the multiple correlation uh, coefficient was 74% which suggests that other components, uh, it could be fruct and dextran or uh, different components, could have a greater role in the final molasses purity. And uh, finally, I just wanna say that Audubon Sugar Institute is willing to provide factory data analysis for the Louisiana sugar factories, following the methodology that I already explained. And if you need more information, uh, please, uh, Contact me, that's, a, that's my email. And we are able to, to analyze information that you have from the last grinding seasons. Thank you so much.